Hey guys, happy December 1st. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Ashley and here on my channel we talk all about embroidery, applique, Etsy, and running your own small business. So it has been a long time guys. I have so many videos recorded and zero editing and zero editing time. So I'm going to give this a shot this year. I'm going to do a very, very modified version of Vlogmas. I'm going to start out with this today on December 1st and we'll see how we go. It is not going to be a daily thing. I can guarantee you that even with shorts and things like that, because honestly, I'm buried here under 200 jackets, have two little babies running around. I, I just don't have the time. There's not enough of me, but I'm going to give it a try. I do want to get back on track with you guys and get to being here on YouTube and showing up for you guys on a more regular basis. So I'm hoping here in the next couple of weeks, once all the Christmas stuff is out the door, things will settle down and I can find a new, new normal, I guess. Um, but it's been a little crazy ride here this fall and with two babies this time around, extra orders. Like I said, I probably got 200 jackets here. Yeah, so much to do, but, um, Let's go ahead and jump into this new video today where I am making my daughters their Christmas pajamas. Um, the tradition I started when my older daughter was a baby is that I give her a Christmas box to unwrap on December 1st. The box includes a pair of pajamas. Um, every year so far they've been custom made and embroidered by me. We'll see if I can keep up with that. And then a new Christmas book to enjoy. And I hope to continue that at least while they're young um, <clears throat> young enough to enjoy a new book in Christmas pajamas. I do this on December 1st versus a Christmas Eve box on the 24th because I like to um, enjoy those the entire Christmas season versus, you know, just on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Um, so that way they can wear them multiple times. We can read the books over and over. Um, we're starting to get quite the collection of Christmas books now, even if it's with a couple years because I usually buy more than one book. Um, <clears throat> plus things we've just accumulated throughout the season. So I'm getting chatty. Let's go ahead and get started on making these Christmas pajamas. They are going to be so cute. I love this year's print. to be using the creative applicated creative appliques um, I love glittermas font um, I tried to if you're familiar with the I love glitter font or the similar ones they have the name and like a script and then they have like the different swashes that go um, before and after or in between words and stuff um, just because of the small size of these pajamas um, I couldn't get them to fit without making it really, really tiny, um, and I didn't like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just use that font for their name across, and then below I used one of the swashes that's meant for like before or after the name underneath it, just in a big larger size, um, so it fills the space below the name, um, just to kind of give it that extra pizzazz. Um, so it's not just a name on there, but it's also not applique and not going to take very long. So, and it's Christmas lights. So I made them the same color as the Christmas lights on the pajama pants. So the red, green, ooh, I'm going to have to change the red, aren't I? Y'all, I didn't think this through. I haven't done this yet. Okay. So, um, green, blue, yellow, and then I guess I'm going to have to pick a different color for the red because it's going on a red shirt. Um, we'll just, we'll edit that on the fly, right? Okay. So let's go ahead and get the first one going on the machine. I'm going to show you how I set up the colors on one of my tin needles. I like to re I manually select my fonts first. I know a lot of people have had questions on how to do that. So hopefully this will help you. All right, so I have my fast frame arm here on my tin needle already. Um, I use 
the direct connection to attach my tin needle to my computer. Otherwise, you can use the um, USB. Um, the first one up is going to be my younger daughter, so I'm going to find the correct one and click set. Then I go to this little spool with the um, thread color icon and it shows you the 64 standard colors. You can also change it. You can go to custom thread colors, whatever. Um, but how I set these up in my software using So What Pro, this doesn't work so well with Brilliance I found, but So What Pro, um, I know what colors to select from their chart. So that actually corresponds pretty well um, to colors that are already on here. Um, I just pick ones that are pretty close. Um, it does not have to be exact, in my opinion. I just need, I just double check what I have on the spool, matches what's on here. Um, so 800 is red, that's correct, that's what I use for that. Um, next is 515, that is green. Let me check, so I'm gonna back out of that. I'm gonna go down here to my settings, scroll over. Um, I've actually got green set as 507. It probably just auto-populated that on a different design and I just left it. Um, another thing I'm gonna do real quick, you'll see these anchor symbols. That means you've anchored in a specific color. Um, so I am going to click on one. I'm gonna click reset. That's gonna remove that anchor. So it's going to assign a different color if I need another color to that. Um, I always leave um, four, five, six, and seven anchored in in white, silver, black, and red because I use that a lot on um, my jackets. And the reason I use those, I don't know if you can see up here, they're on the center of the tin needle. They're the hardest ones to reach to change. So that's why I choose to leave those anchored in versus, you know, leaving one, two, three, and four or um, seven, eight, nine, and 10. It's those center ones that are hard to reach anyways. So I don't have to change them until they're empty basically. Um, so I'm going to close out of that. That was just a little side note while we're here. Um, so I'm going to go back to that. Um, so red's correct. Green, I'm going to do 507. It's this, which one is it? This one, this one, I don't know. 507 over here. Um, blue, it's not on my, my machine, so that's fine. I'm going to leave it at 420. Um, we do not have a yellow on here yet, or not the right shade of yellow. Um, so I always just use this one over here, that 106. For some reason, it never picks up black, right? It tries to do this 519. I always use that top um, left one, that's 900. And then the name I'm going to do in white, since it's on that dark red shirt. So actually, we do need to go back and change red because we don't actually want it to be red. Um, so I was thinking red just to match all four colors from here, but it's going on a red shirt, so that's not gonna work. Um, let's see, I could do white. Let's see how white looks. I don't love it. Um, I've actually already got turquoise on here and I thought maybe that would work. Um, I, it's not my preference, but I think I'm gonna do turquoise. Turquoise, royal blue, green, and yellow. I think that'll be okay. What do you guys think? I mean, I guess once you see this, it's already gonna be done, but let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna rotate it. I am putting this on my machine using my fast frames. You saw me hoop that already. Um, so the attachment for the fast frame is down here at the bottom of the shirt. So that means it's going on my machine like this with the neckline out. So I do need to rotate the design, basically what I call upside down. Um, just like that, I'm gonna click close, and I'm gonna end edit, I'm done editing. The next thing I do is do alignment on my machine, like where is this going to show up in my hoop? Um, I use this um, little box down here that has the two arrows. I use this all the time. Um, I'm gonna click on that, and I use this box over here, and I'm looking at basically this center side of the design. That's where the needle's at right now. I actually am going to align it by the top center, or I guess bottom center, depending on, how, on your frame of reference. Just like that. Click close. Um, so now I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and put my hoop on here. Just like that and tighten it down with the thumb screws. 
So we're looking at the top center of the design where it's going to be placed here. Right now, if you're not sure which needle it's um, reference or using as a reference point, it's whatever one you used last, or if you just turn your machine on, it's needle one. I know I used needle two last, so that's where I'm referencing, but if you're not sure, you don't remember, if you click over here on your machine, you just unlock it and click the scissors, it drops it down and like to thread cut, you can see where you're at. That also helps you see where it's actually at versus, you know, just trying to eyeball it. Um, so that's helpful. Um, since these 10 needles do not have the lasers like the brother and uh, baby lock six needles. So over here on my machine, it's over here in the very far corner. I'm going to use these arrows to move uh, my design um, in the hoop. It's centered right now, so I don't need to move it left or right, but I do need to move it this way um, down or I guess towards me towards the top of the shirt. So I'm just going to use that arrow and just keeping an eye over here on where my needle is. Okay, if I think that's about right, again, I can click that lock and scissors. There we go. Just like that. And I think we're good to go. This is a really small shirt. It's a 12 month, so I do want it pretty close to the neckline just because it's going on a really little, little, little lady. So, um, this actually is actually might be a little bit big on her. Um, but we'll see. And I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to click over here on my machine. I'm going to click sewing. That's going to take us to the sewing field. Now it's going to tell me where I need to change colors. So it grays everything else out. So it knew I already had turquoise on one. It knew I already had green on three. So it's going to use those already and not make me change them again. Again, it knew I had black on six, white on four. So we're good to go on those. However, I do need to change needle two and needle eight. Number eight, it wants me to put my yellow thread on. So I'm going to click on that first. And it takes me over there. Now, one tip I have for this, if you're new to multi-needle embroidery, is not to thread the machine every time. That takes forever. So what I'm going to do is um, use my scissors, and I'm just going to snip up here right by the spool and tie a knot and pull that all the way. I, I take the thread out of the needle of the eye and pull that all the way through. So it just pulls it all the way through here. You don't need to re-thread it. I will say though, however, if you are having tension problems, you may want to go back and make sure everything's under these little hoops or little metal ledges here. Um, the t in, in the tension disc, everything, make sure it's through everything where it's supposed to be. Um, because, um, if you, they're not in there just right, or there's lint, dust, mine's terribly dusty, don't judge. Um, yeah, it'll throw off your tension just a tiny little bit. will throw off your tension majorly. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera real quick, and then we'll get to stitching. one down. I think that came out cute. I think the turquoise pops on there. So one down, one more to go. These pajamas came out so super cute. Look at this. So cute. Both of them are done. I'm going to wrap them up with a book and that's what we do on December 1st. We have them open a little present. It's from us. It's not from an elf, Santa, whatever. Um, just for me. They know it's for me. Um, new PJs so they can enjoy them the entire month 
and a Christmas book so we can read it. I just add it to our stack of Christmas books. Honestly, I just make sure I buy each of them a new book every year and their set of custom pajamas. Um, they'll probably end up with more custom pajamas because I actually have a couple others laying around too. I might have a problem with that. But <laughs> that's all we do. Um, and I do this on December 1st versus December 24th so they can enjoy them all month long. Thanks so much for joining me today, guys. I will see you next time.